Have you ever wanted to get nicely structured JSON data out of your AI modules in Make so you can create multiple assets with that data? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, how to prompt for creating JSON in your AI modules and how to parse that JSON into multiple bundles. And I will also show you an error that almost always pops up when you try this and how to fix it. So I want to give you a little bit of a use case of why you might want to do this. I've got a scenario here. I use Simbly AI for my uh, note taking duties, if you will, when I have Zoom calls. Simbly has a webhook that sends the transcript of the conversation over here to make. And right here, I actually use AI to separate it out into different ideas. I want to find ideas of things I said in a call and put them in my Evernote so I have a list of topics that I could possibly make blog posts or YouTube videos from. And so this is the part of the scenario that does that. So I have a prompt in here and it kicks it out and here is our result. Uh, you can see here is a JSON result right there. That little guy is the error. I will show you how to fix. And then we parse that with the parse JSON and we have these beautiful bundles of titles and explanations. So I took this one phone call that was about an hour long and broke it up into nine different possible ideas. So the first thing we have to do is we need to talk about JSON structure. And I'm going to show you a couple JSON structures here that we can use. You'll be able to modify these if you want, and you'll be able to copy and paste them into your scenarios. So let's look at the first example here. We have a basic array, which means when this is parsed, it's going to be, in this case, two bundles. This is going to be an example we give to our uh, AI scenario to replicate and send data out with. And so you notice here, I have a blog idea keyword. So we're, we're going to prompt this and I'm going to say, I want, I want you to create a idea, a blog idea keyword for each of the sections of this video. And so if we use this JSON as our example, it's going to spit out just a keyword. Now I'm going to move to my, the example I'm actually going to use here. And this site that I'm on is JSON Lint. It's really great for making sure your JSON is valid. So right here, I have my blog idea keyword again in my array, but then I've also added blog idea text. So what I want my AI to spit out in my JSON is here's a keyword that you could use and here's some text from the video that goes along with that keyword. And then we can take that and morph that into something new as a blog post or a video idea. If you're new to JSON, don't worry about that right now because this is simply, you're going to copy and paste it in there. You can change the labels though. If you're not doing blogs, you can change this to whatever you want, but you want to make sure that that label and this label match, and then the second label and the second label match. You don't want to put blog idea keyword number one, blog idea keyword number two, and so on, because what happens is those become different variables when it's parsed and your data will be really messy. So you want to make sure your variables here and here are consistent all the way through your example. So I'm going to copy this JSON structure. And next we're going to talk about crafting the perfect JSON prompt. There is some prompting you'll need to do. Uh, I'm going to kind of guide you through that, but it's really not terribly difficult. We're going to go over and use Claude. Uh, it is my favorite tool for prompting. And we're actually going to use Claude to write a prompt for chat GPT. Okay. I'm in my new favorite chat tool. It's called abacus.ai. There'll be a, a referral link in the description. If you want to grab this, it's $10 a month. It has access to multiple LLM models. You can choose it or it will auto assign it. And I love it. I've canceled. Perplexity, Claude, and ChatGPT on the chat side. The $20 a month stuff, I've canceled three of those and I'm paying $10 a month for this. So I would highly recommend you check it out. It might save you some money. So what I'm going to do here is I have my sample JSON here and I'm going to paste that down here at the bottom. Give me some space at the top to prompt. And then I've got another great tool that I use for prompting. It is called Whisperflow. And I can just click this and start just talking into the microphone and it will prompt for me. So I, what I've found is sometimes it doesn't like going directly into a chat window. So I'm actually going to bring 
my Notepad++ over here, and I'm going to speak it into this, copy it, and then paste it into Abacus. So I have a shortcut on my computer that I'm just going to push and hold down while I talk. I want you to create a prompt for ChatGPT that will look at a transcript from a YouTube video and break it into different ideas. I'm wanting blog post ideas, and I want you to follow the JSON structure below to give me a blog idea keyword, like a semantic SEO keyword, and then a blog idea text value that is a paragraph or two of information that was retrieved from the YouTube transcript. I want you to output this in valid JSON, and I don't want you to output anything else. Please create me a prompt that will do this. So I'll let go, and right there, that right there is all the stuff that I just said. So I'm going to copy this, I'm going to paste it over here, and then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to choose Claude. Let's do Sonnet, and I'm going to let that run. The other thing about Abacus AI is it's really fast. Uh, it's going to spit this out really fast, and it does a really great job. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to go over here to make.com. I've already created a basic trigger. Uh, obviously, you wouldn't do it this way. In your scenario, you're going to have a data source. But this is my like incoming data source, for example. And I've just put a variable there called transcript, and I pasted the entire transcript in. So if we run this once, you can see there is a very long transcript. Now, I am going to turn on Scribe, and this is going to capture the steps that I use to build this scenario. And in the description below, you'll be able to find the scribe link to see exactly how I did it. Uh, so you have the video and the step-by-step -step instructions that you can use. There's also a link in the description for an affiliate link to scribe. Uh, I can tell you this is a super, super powerful tool and I've really loved uh, using it. All right, so scribe is up and running. We're gonna build this scenario right here together. All right, so I'm gonna click here to add a new module and we're going to add an open AI module, and then we're going to uh, create a completion. All right, so let's move this over. I'm going to use 04 mini here. So now we're going to go down here and add our prompt. I still have it copied to my clipboard. I'm going to go down here to roll and choose user, and then I'm going to click there and paste this in. Let me make this a little wider. Those double arrows right there will make this wider. So here's my prompt. Looks good, there's my example, and then I need to put my transcript value right here. I'm gonna get rid of the max completion tokens, just leave that blank so it can use as many as it needs to. We're gonna hit save here, and next I'm going to add another module here, and we're gonna type JSON, it's right there. We can search and type it if we need to, and I'm gonna add the parse JSON module, and for my JSON string, I'm gonna add the results of my ChatGPT OpenAI module right there, and we're going to save. All right, I'm going to pause my capture over here for a moment. We're going to save this, save anyway, and let's run and see how this does. I'm going to ignore warnings. It's unhappy because we have a parse JSON at the end, and the reason it doesn't like that is like, well, you're parsing JSON and you're supposed to do something next. It doesn't like it being at the end. Obviously, you'll do something different when you build this, but I'm not going to add anything to the end of that. I'm going to say ignore warnings and run anyway. All right, so this finished without an error. So let's look here at our results. And we have valid JSON here. That's good. And if we look here, we should have bundles. And we have... We have six bundles. And so right here is LinkedIn lead generator. And then here is the text of our idea. This did a really good job. And it actually didn't throw the error that I typically get. But I'm still going to show you how to fix that. Uh, we'll look at my other scenario and how that works. The way I fix it over here in my assembly AI scenario is I have a nested function and what happens is we're trying to get rid of these JSON tags and they're totally normal. This is what 
AI does to enclose, enclose JSON. It's basically marks that says, hey, everybody, this is JSON. And then it closes it with these three marks and it goes on. But when you try to pass that to a parse JSON module, it breaks. So I'm actually going to go ahead and add it to my new scenario. It ran correctly now, but it might not run like that every time. It might try to include those characters and that'll break the the parse json so i'm going to go ahead and add it to this other scenario i'm going to resume my scribe so that we capture this so i'm going to click in here and i'm going to get rid of the replace for or the result here for just a moment and i'm going to go to my text functions and i'm going to say replace and then i'm going to click right there Every click I make, Scribe is adding another frame. So you'll be able to watch this and, and follow this step by step. So now I'm going to go back up to my result and I'm going to add it back in there. So the way the replace works is it says replace, and we're going to look at this text, whatever the, the value is you want to look at, what, what are we going to replace from? And then we're going to go here and we're going to paste that, uh, I think there are three tildes and a JSON. So we're going to paste that in there. And you can copy that elsewhere. You can copy that out of Scribe. You want to get specifically those characters. And then we're going to go back to our text functions and we're going to put empty string. So we're saying replace that with an empty string. So poof, it's just going to disappear. So next I'm going to go right up here to my arrows and make that wider. And then I'm going to go to the beginning and this time I'm going to text. And if you're looking at this and you're like, Andy, I have no idea what this means. Don't worry about what it means. Just type what I type and you will, you'll be fine. This will work. Okay. So we're going to type replace all lowercase shift nine, which will create an open parenthesis. We're going to jump to the end because this replace function is looking at our la the result of our last replace function and we're going to replace something else. So I'm going to do a semicolon and then I'm going to paste that JSON again. I'm going to get rid of the JSON part. Okay. So this is the part where we're taking away from the beginning. This is the part we're taking away at the end. I'm going to do a semicolon again. Then I'm, I'm going to show you how to type the empty string in here. We're going to do a double curly bracket. Type empty string and then a closing double curly bracket. And that turns it into that variable. And then we're going to do a shift zero to give it a closing parenthesis. So what we've said and these functions work inside out. Make is going to look at that inside function and say, okay, we're going to replace the tilde, 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 J-S-O-N with nothing. And then we're going to look at that and we're going to replace the tilde, tilde, tilde with nothing, which will show up at the end. We're going to save that. We're going to save our scenario. By the way, every time you save a scenario, it creates a new restore point in Make, which you can get to by clicking this here, a new version. We're going to click the magic wand to make it auto align. And now we're ready to run this. I'm going to pause my scribe and we're going to run this again. All right. So let's look at the result of our chat GPT. Uh, it, it still didn't give us that error, which is awesome, but we have those replaces in there just in case it does several bundles here. Let's look at our parse JSON. All right. So now we have, now we have five bundles this time around. Okay, so I just realized something kind of bizarre in our result here. So here's a bundle right here, and you can see we have blog keyword, blog idea keyword, then the text, then we have another blog idea keyword variable here. So I'm going to go back and adjust my prompt. First of all, let's look at our prompt and make sure it still looks correct. All right, this does look correct. Here's how I'm going to fix that. I'm going to go back here to my result, and I'm going to just copy the whole thing and we're going to go back to Claude and tell it we need we need to make this a little stronger because it's not outputting correctly so I'm going to go back here please look at this output and compare it to the desired output we gave you earlier it did not output correctly and we need you to fix the prompt so this doesn't happen again all right I prompted directly into Abacus this time it was just fine so we're going to paste that in there and we're going to say go and we'll see what Claude can do. Hey, it sees the issue. Great. 
All right, analyze. All right, here's the beginning again. So we're going to fix it. No empty fields allowed. All right, tells me the key changes, crucial elements, no empty fields allowed. Okay, that, that should be good. I'm going to copy it down to transcript because we already have a copy. Now we already have the transcript mapped, so I'm just going to put this above our transcript text. I'm going to resume scribe, so I captured this step of pasting this in here. All right, scroll down. I'm going to click those double arrows to make this a little wider. Click right there, get rid of everything above our transcript, and then I'm going to paste that in. And let's save that again. Let's save our scenario, tidy it up, and let's run this again. Gives me another chance to have coffee. All right, so let's take a look at our JSON here. Blog keyword idea, blog text idea. Good, this looks, this looks better. Perfect. So let's look at our JSON output. There we go. There we have. Now we have the keywords. So we have keywords, we have ideas, and we have five of those, six of those actually, six bundles. And then you could send those into a Google Sheet or someplace to store those. So you have some ideas that you can glean from, in this case, somebody else's YouTube video that did a really good job on the video. I'm going to click complete capture on our scribe right there. Thank you for watching this video. Leave a comment if you have a question or thoughts about this entire process. Also, if you want more AI video tutorials, check out this playlist and don't forget to grab the scribe and the other resources in the description. I thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.